Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Well, I've always distanced myself from that. I have no problem today distancing what I think is responsible rebellion from what those people were doing in Michigan and what anybody else is doing if, if what they're doing is causing a ruckus, increasing the likelihood of transmission and not doing anything productive. If you go back, if, if anybody's concerned about this in terms of an integrity point of Rob's position, I always say like, I'm applying fundamental principles to the con to the circumstances at hand, right? Mm -hmm. To the context of dealing with. You can go back and one of the very first people I got into a deep discussion on what do we do about the restrictions with coronavirus was Maj Ture. We did a live probably a month ago now mm -hmm. where he, he was celebrating the videos and the pictures and the selfies of people um, violating the curfew in Newark, New Jersey, and I think in, in Brooklyn as well. Okay. I said, dude, that's irresponsible. Why are you doing that? Well, it's freedom, man. And we got into it, and he, I, he said, let's do a live. I said, yeah, let's do a live. So we had a conversation in front of the world, mm -hmm. and the point was I, I'm not for stay home because the government told you if you have a reason to go out. But I'm also not for go out because the government said not to just to prove you can. So if you want to go to the store after curfew and drop off some canned goods and a, and, and a bottle of you know uh, hand sanitizer for an elderly person that shouldn't be going out, you want to do it at 10 o'clock to make a point? Cool. Do it at 10 o'clock to make a point. But use your time, use your rebellion, use your civil disobedience to achieve something ex other than a selfie and, and you know feeling good about yourself. Yeah. And, and so – talked about responsible rebellion mm -hmm. for over a month it just took a while for it to get to the point where i said okay two weeks i got you three weeks maybe for a month here's my new concern guys and this is this came up a couple weeks ago it got to this point my new concern is that people aren't putting up with this anymore mm -hmm. the anger is growing especially in places that aren't seeing the kinds of outbreaks that were predicted right now we know intellectually the reason we're not seeing these crazy outbreak numbers might be because of what we're doing we can still continue to do a lot of that and go back to business. If the convenience store worker and the, the cl bagging clerk at, at Publix can be trusted to work responsibly under these conditions, so can a college-educated guy or a third-generation you know, family business owner or other people in our community. It, it, we're tr like If you think about it, we're trusting the drive-through attendant to get this right. Mm -hmm. So how trust the, the, everybody else to go get it right as well because we know a hell of a lot more about this and society has accepted a lot more than we did six or eight weeks ago. I'll tell you a funny thing happened yesterday. I'm in an airport, getting ready to get on a plane. We're going to spend two and a half, three hours in this tube with recycled air, right? Mm -hmm. People are social distancing on the jetway, mm -hmm. like all out of habit. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, there's no marks on the floor. Nobody said to do it. There wasn't an announcement that said, please maintain your distance on the jetway. Like literally it was just the new normal, right? I was in a convenience store a few days ago and there was a woman who wasn't doing the physical distancing. She was ignoring the little lines that were on the floor and she was kind of creeping up on me. And I just kind of looked over my shoulder. But she had a mask on. Like I wasn't horrified. I didn't feel like I needed to elbow strike or anything. But it was kind of weird that two or three people in front of us every time I moved up, she would clearly not stay on the line. She kept moving up. And here, and it wasn't just me because here's what happened. When I walked up to get there, – there were two – there were three cashiers. Two opened up at the same time and said, next guest. I walked to one. The woman behind me and the woman behind her, I guess, like bumped into each other. And she said – oh, the, the other one, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were with him. So not only did it make – was it weird to me, but she, the woman naturally assumed because this woman wasn't physically distancing, she must have been with me. Yeah. So we – Maybe she was trying to be with you, Rob. Come on, man. Yeah, she was She was uh, out of my demographic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Look. Okay. This is – so here's my thing. Here's a, To me, I think, you know, you were talking about the people in Michigan – um, I guess they were protesting and you and you feel like they weren't observing, you know, uh, safe enough practices. Right. It, the, the sense of responsible rebellion. Right. So you feel so you think they were being irresponsible because they weren't wearing masks. They weren't far away enough from each other. I know here in Florida, they were there were all these kids that everyone got mad at them because it was spring break and they were out on the beach. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that. I'm personally not going to do that, 
right? So I'm not personally going to go out on the beach and party with those guys or whatever. But at the same time, I think that people have the right to get together and do something like that. You know, if they all make that choice, huh? But this is the same, this is the same argument I've had about open carry for, mm -hmm. for like a decade now, right? Mm -hmm. We allow it for a decade. You have the right to sell all your stuff mm -hmm. and go buy lottery tickets and try to become a millionaire, right? right? You're not gonna find a single financial advisor that would tell you it's a good idea. Right. You have the right to open carry and wear a, you know, an AR over your shoulder and walk right. down the street. You're not going to find a personal defense advocate, at least not in me, that's going to tell you it's smart. A Second Amendment rights advocate can tell you it's smart. It's a abuse of your rights. Yeah. It's a but this is the right. but this is the fine line because we wouldn't do something. Does that mean that these people can't do this thing? And I know a lot of people on the flip side of this would go, well, what if they get sick? Well, these are all people who made a choice to get. What if you have sex with someone and you get sick? You know, I mean, there's lots of what if you share a drink with someone and you get sick in the regular world or if you get into a car with someone, you get into a car accident. So so if I'm going to be the guy that, that comes up with the logo or the, 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 the catchphrase or whatever, responsible rebellion mm -hmm. and puts that up. Right. And I call you. You hear and I say, and I say hey, man, I need you to, to come up with a logo for me because you're an artsy guy. Like help right. me come up with a real logo for this. And I'm posting the content and I'm recruiting others to help me with the content. Then. I get to define mm -hmm. what's inside of that parameter, right? Not the outside world. Mm -hmm. so, so just like at Personal Defense Network, I decide what gets published and what doesn't mm -hmm. based on whether or not it fits into the paradigm. It may not be exactly what I teach, mm -hmm. but it's got to fit into the paradigm. So I'm telling you, from my standpoint, I'm not saying that they should be arrested. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that's not what Responsible Rebellion is about, and I would not do it, and I wouldn't advise them to do it in the same way I wouldn't advise somebody to go out and right. open care. But we also wouldn't force them to not do it. I'm not going to go up on the steps and point a gun at him. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Now I will go. I will, as I do, insist that they're doing it wrong. And if they ask me, I'm going to tell them no. And mm -hmm. if they show up on my page and say this is really okay, this is the way to do it, I'm going to say no, it's not. Mm -hmm. So when you force, like I don't know what that means. I'm not going to go to war with them, mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to. I'm not going to call the police and say those guys should be arrested. But at the same time, I'm going to I'm going to do what I can as an advocate and as an educator and as a communicator and as an influencer, whatever word you want to throw at it. I mean, no official capacity whatsoever. I'm going to try to dissuade. Yeah, it no, I see. I see exactly where you're coming from. I just think at the same time, obviously, let's make it clear to some folks out there who are like, hey, if I want to get together with 100 of my friends or associates or whatever we met on a Facebook page and we want to protest this thing, and we don't wear masks and we don't stay uh, 10 feet apart from each other. That's our, you know, we, you know, we have, we, we should be able to do that. That's the way to put it. Someone would say, well, what if they get sick and then we have to treat them? My thing about the, what if they get sick and we have to treat them thing is, well, what, what difference does it make? Well, somewhere in there, that's the guy who says, I'm going to shoot my gun in the air on new year's Eve. Right. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem. Somewhere in there, that guy's going to say, that's my right. And we're going to say, but you're endangering somebody. That bullet has to come down somewhere. Mm -hmm. So the guy that's saying, I'm going to go out in a crowd and I'm not going to wash my hands and I'm going to cough at people, somewhere in there, I know it's extreme, but there's the, just like when you fire that gun in the air in, in you know middle of nowhere, desert of Nevada, New Year's yeah. Eve, when you're there with your buddies at the campsite, and you fire that gun in the air and there's a point, you know, zero, 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 nine, one percent chance that it might land on anybody. And then some, you know, smaller percentage of that that it might kill them. There's still some percentage that you're going to stand on that capital step without a mask on, and you're not going to know that you're you're carrying, and you're going to cough, and it's going to get on somebody, and then their grandmother is going to get it, and they're going to die. Yeah, it's still, but, but, but everyone's so making that decision to do that and be there. That's my thing about. Like me personally, I do not. I don't like going to shot show. I don't like any kind of crowds. But you guys saw me at shot show, right? But if I don't have to get into a situation, or if we're in a situation like this, my brain's going to say, hey, I don't really need to hang out with, with uh, all these people right now and put my family or whatever at risk to do it. But, but you know, I think people could do that. If they get sick or whatever from doing it, that, or they make other people that they care about sick or people that they don't know sick, yeah, that's not a good thing. But, it, you know, I just feel like these are people making decisions that we all make every day and what sets us apart is that we we have knowledge maybe of what's safer and all that kind of stuff like you're talking about the you know shooting up in the air i wouldn't do that 
I'm not going to say what I did when I was younger living in New York City and I didn't know any better. Um, at the same time, you know, there's uh, physics and, and there's a difference between like, you know, something that's accelerating on naturally and then something that's falling naturally. We could we can argue about it. I just wouldn't do it. Right. But those people, yeah, those people doing that are making a choice and the people standing next to them, they're also making a choice if you know, the, I don't know, 10 million in one chance or whatever, that one of those rounds is actually going to fall down and, and uh, injure them. I think it's very unlikely that it's going to come down with the same velocity that it comes out of a barrel, but, right? It's, it's like this weird thing, uh, and I'm not... It would, but that's not how it works, right? Yeah. And the angle and everything else, but mm-hmm. it, it's, um, I don't know... Uh, Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.